Hey guys, it's Paige. Today I'm going to be going over some of the patterns that I've bought recently. Alright, let's get started. So I have been attending Joanne's pattern sales. Um, and I've been kind of saving stuff up. I haven't had a ton of time to sew and apologies for not posting a video last weekend. But uh, my family is in town so I've just been enjoying my time with them. Uh, I don't think you guys can fault me for that, right? Hopefully not. But I have been buying patterns as I want to do. I've also been buying a lot of patterns specifically for um, my LARP. I went to my LARP recently and I will be posting kind of a breakdown on what happened and how much fun it was and how I can't wait to go back. But um, I was NPCing as a non-player character, so to be a player character you kind of have to, you know, have your own costumes, which I am stoked about, but uh, I don't have a ton of fantasy type patterns. I have a lot of historical patterns, which I guess could pull double duty, but for the LARP I'm in, there's definitely, I would say, kind of a distinct style that I'm going to try to, you know, stick within and keep it within the world. Um, also, please excuse me, my skin is dry and I'm one of those people who never breaks out of my face and I... I miss it. So, but yeah, so let's go ahead and, um, you know, go over all of the fun patterns I got. So McCall's was on sale for my last, um, pattern sale that I went to and McCall's is like killing it in the cosplay arena. And so they have these really beautiful, which are going to be super hard to store, but I'm a sucker for packaging. They're almost like, um, Vogue sizing the old school Vogue sizing. They're like an eight by 10 package. But um, the first one I got of the cosplay line is this awesome cape. It is, I don't know if these have pattern numbers on them. Um, I think it is M2016, but it's like the classic Game of Thrones cape. I actually got some um, fake fur at my thrift store and I would love to try that because I've heard that the X guy going on right there instead of like tying it around your collar is actually super helpful if you're trying to be active and wear a cloak um but yeah it comes in you know small to xxl and i think this is more men's sizing uh but it does take a lot of fabric some of these are you know eight and a half yards of fabric so this would be perfect for i don't know something cheap honestly i might try to do it in a fleece because it looks kind of like a fleece in the picture but again I'm a sucker for photography as you guys know I'm a photographer so these were 99 cents I was gonna buy them the next one I have is kind of like an 18th century oh the name is Nightfell Herbalist it's M2110 um, this comes up to size 24 and it's kind of like an 18th century inspired look although as somebody who does this kind of costuming it's not accurate at all but LARP. I can do whatever I want, really. Um, if you kind of look at the back, the little corset piece is built into the um, front of the dress. And I think this style of dress that they're referencing is a zone front gown, which I have a historical pattern for. But, you know, this seems pretty easy. The back looks really good, though. So that back seaming is really similar to, you know, some stuff you might see. And the way they have the sleeve attached almost looks like the correct way, although it's not. Because you'd need the, you don't attach a sleeve necessarily in the round on an 18th century piece. You fit it to the person and then you use a sleeve cuff, which is just, you, know, you just kind of fit it to the wearer and then you finish it with just a rectangular piece that goes from front to back. But it's vaguely correct. Uh, it looks pretty good though. I don't know. I'm excited for this one. Not necessarily like in the style of my LARP, but we'll see. This one has nothing to do with anything. It's a pair of angel wings. <laughs> um, stuff that's weird like this, stuff that, you know, I might not necessarily see myself making sometime soon, but I can see them not maybe having this next season. You never know, there might be a time where I need to make angel wings. I mean, I'm a boudoir photographer. I could, you know, want to throw some Victoria's Secret style shoots out there. But I looked at, I had no idea how they made this. And it looks like it's just the wings are made out of felt. 
and then they attach them to like a holster. Like a, you know, almost like you would wear if you were weightlifting with like a waist brace. But I don't know, I just thought it would be cool to have in case I wanted wings of any kind. So yeah, that's that. This is McCall's uh, 2015. And it comes in sizes extra small through extra, extra, extra large. So although I don't think there's, you know, necessarily a ton of fitting that comes with something that just hangs off your back. And the next one I got that I can see myself actually using for my future LARP character is this guy. It is a neck corset and an underbust corset. Do I have underbust corset patterns? Totally. Do I think that I could use some more? And do I have a neck corset pattern? No. Do I have a neck? It's very short, so this could be a disaster. But it got me thinking that, you know, any accessory that I could add could be kind of cool, right? Or is this really dumb? I don't know, you tell me. This is McCall's 2103. And this is the last of my big guy fancy time patterns. So now I'm just gonna kind of like pull stuff out at random and see what we get. I have quite a few. Okay, so I bought this before I decided that I wasn't going to buy patterns that didn't come in my size range anymore. Um, this is Butterick 6413. It is a um, Gertie pattern. So I love Gertie's designs. I love retro, I love vintage, I love stuff that's fitted in the waist. My main problem is none of her patterns fit my body out of the package. Even her independent line charm patterns, even though they promised that they would you know, figure out a way to do plus sizes in the Kickstarter, they're, they're not. I don't know what it is, but I made myself a promise that I wouldn't buy patterns that didn't fit me anymore, and I bought this before that. Um, it is super cute. It has like a little keyhole on the midriff, which is the perfect amount of midriff if you're not into showing your whole midriff. But I don't know. I don't like the skirt necessarily, but as you can see in the line drawing, everything's attached to a waistband. So I prefer a more full skirt. I'll just slap a full skirt on that. Um, I might try to grade this up. I might try to sell it. I don't know. But I'm just, you know, done investing money in companies that don't want to invest money in me. So yeah, this is, you know, one that I might not actually make, but I have it. And again, another Gertie pattern. It's only like a size or two small for me, which is the most frustrating part. Um, wouldn't be terrible to grade up, but I liked the idea of a dress that was created specifically for fringe. And if you look on the back, I really like asymmetrical, um, you know, the one strap option. It's really pretty, but again, I may not make it because it doesn't go to my size. Okay, this is definitely gonna fall under LARP options. <laughs> it's an underbust corset. Could I draft this on my own? Probably. It was 99 cents though, so why would I? You gotta see the options there. And this is Simplicity 8626. Next guy we have, oh, this one is super cute. This is Simplicity 8879A, I don't know what B is the origami dress. I am freaking out about this. I love this dress. So it's like, it looks like it is an overdress and an underdress, but it's just a one piece dress and you can sew it with a contrasting fabric. I think the fit will be really nice on me. You guys know I like a more relaxed waist, but I still like a waistline. You can kind of see the line drawing on the back. Um, I was seeing a lot of stuff in Simplicity. I don't know if this is, I don't think this is a brand. I think this is their main line but it's just a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe like more mod clothy, more made welly inspired, um, just something a little bit more relaxed. I think that's the trend in women's clothing is for a long time at least, you know, when I was in my 20s, the clothing tended to skew, you know, really tight, really form fitting. Mad Men had just resurfaced. I love vintage style fashions, but wiggle dresses were like, big, pencil skirts were big. I think we're definitely getting back towards a more um, relaxed style of fit. I will wear the hell out of this dress. In fact, it is quickly moving up to my top of the to make pile. Um, this comes in sizes, let's see, it says right on the current, extra, extra small to extra, extra large. 
And just for reference, the extra small is 29 and a half inches in the bust, and the extra large is 48 inches in the bust. Um, the finished garment measurements, it has a lot of ease, so if you're making the largest size, which is the 48 inch bust, you're actually gonna have 54 inches in the bust. So this is definitely something that I think people who are a little bit outside the size range could fit in, although I am in the size range for this, and thank you, Simplicity, for you know, trying to fit my body. This is very obviously a LARP option. <laughs> this is a Simplicity 8199, and it is just like a full-blown elf costume. I don't know, they don't have a name on this. It's by Lorianne Costume Designs, but it is the underbust corset, the hood, the, you know, easy dress. This just looked easy to me. I think there's a lot of elastic in here. Um, the edges are finished with bias tape. Uh, this seemed like something that I could make and maybe like if I made it in like a neutral or like a character or a color my character would wear a lot for LARP live action role play, I would, you know, be able to use a lot. So that's just why I got this. Again, I don't buy patterns for the most part unless they are on sale with Big Four. Um, I did buy a pattern recently that was not on sale but it was 40% off, so it wasn't that bad. And I understand that in the States, I'm very, very lucky to be able to get the 99 cents and 199 pattern deals. But again, we've discussed this before. I am a hoarder of patterns, not of fabric. No shade on people that hoard fabric. It's just, I like information and I like buying things to um, make when I'm making something so I get excited about it. Because when I sew for my stash, I've already had that fabric forever and I don't wanna sew with it. And that's how you get a stash that you don't ever use. So I'm slowly working my way through my stash, but again, 99 cents. I'm gonna buy it. It takes up yay much space. Okay, what do we got? LARP. <laughs> um, this is EVA foam armor. And I have recently bought a bunch of the foam tiles from Walmart, the kind you put on the gym floor, and I had a friend that moved who gave me their foam tiles. And while I'm very sad that they are moving to Chicago, I now have a ton of foam tiles to make armor out of. Again, LARP. I just, this is something that I could see them not having next season because it's pretty niche. Um, I know a lot of cosplayers that make foam armor simply use, you know, they duct tape themselves and they cut it up in a pattern. I like having a pattern, I don't need a pattern, but again, you know. This goes up to size 46 bust, so it's the tiniest bit smaller than what I am, but seeing that it's armor and it's foam, I feel like I can kinda eyeball it. I think it looks pretty cool, and we'll see how that turns out. I'm planning on making a foam sword first though, because I don't have a weapon that looks cool, and I think you need a weapon that looks cool for anything else. Oh, so this is a swimsuit pattern and it is not from Joann's. This is from my friend Jenny at Cashmerette. This is the Ipswich swimsuit. Yes, one, one piece in bikini. So Jenny actually sent this to me and she's lovely and she's the best, but it is a plus size bathing suit with cup sizes and you can kind of see the two options there. And I actually am somewhat of a bathing suit aficionado. I've made a couple, I have probably like 20. When the weather gets warm, when it gets humid, even if I'm not in a pool, I'll be on my deck in a bathing suit. I will be camping in a bathing suit. I will be going to a music festival in a bathing suit. I am a bathing suit person. I love wearing them. I love wearing as little clothing as possible. So bathing suits are perfect. And I really wanna thank um, Jenny for sending this to me. Uh, I can't wait to make it up and you'll definitely see this soon. Next up, we have an Angela Clayton pattern from the calls. This is like Victorian underpinnings. I haven't sewn anything Victorian, but you know, I could. I also feel like I hoard these um, historical undergarment patterns because when they go out of print, sometimes they go for like 50 to 100 bucks on eBay. I have, don't think this will go out of print anytime soon because I feel like Angela is pretty popular but I'm interested to try this. And I'm also interested to sew any of her patterns. I haven't sewn them before, so we'll see how that goes. Um, this is a little bit small for me, but it is the one that I bought um, before I made that little promise to myself that I would stop buying stuff that wasn't in my size range. I'm just a couple inches, you know, out of this. And for the corset, I feel like I 
have a little bit of wiggle room since I can squish and then just have a corset gap in the back. It looks like this chemise is pretty forgiving. It's a drawstring waist. So I might be able to fit in this as is, but I'm definitely, McCall's, come on. Go up a little bit in the size range for this awesome pattern. It's not, it's not gonna be the end of the world. I'll buy it more, I promise. All right, I have another McCall's pattern, and this is an Outlander pattern. Um, this probably won't fit me out of the get-go. Again, I bought patterns before I made that promise, but I buy the Outlander patterns because I think that, A, if I don't end up using it, when it goes out of print, somebody will buy it, and B, that I really liked the overdress, even though it's not super accurate, but, you know. I just think it's interesting that McCall's snagged the Outlander, you know, merchandising rights for the pattern. This goes up to a size 22, so it's just the tiniest bit outside of my size range. And then, I don't know, it just looked cool. It takes up a lot of fabric though for the top. It's just fun. And I know I'm somebody who would, you know, maybe want me to make this who would be more in their size range. This necessarily isn't for me, for somebody else. All right. Now I have the Soho 7, which I think is essentially the toaster sweater. It's 8529. Um, I want to sew the toaster sweater. I've been on the fence about it because they didn't necessarily come in my size range. I saw that Simplicity, it's it's basically the toaster sweater, right? They, they straight up copped it. Oh, I'm sure they paid Soho 7 for it. But um, it goes up to an extra large and the wearing ease in the bust is 50. So I should be able to fit this. Uh, but I think the neckline that they have, that's kind of like this guy, it's really interesting because I've never sewn a neckline like that. And I think from looking online at other people's makes, it's like flipped in. So I bought this mainly to see how this neckline was constructed because I can always throw that neckline onto my other tried and true um, drop sleeve sweatshirt pattern, which is the Patterns for Pirates Relaxed Reglin. So we'll see how this goes. All right, this is just something I bought because I'm afraid it'll go out of fashion and be not in the line when I wanna buy it. It is a 1920s Butterick dress. It is B6399. Again, it's one size out of my size range, but there's a good amount of ease in this, we'll be okay. If you are right at the top of the size range for a pattern, like this goes to size 22 and I'm probably more of a size 24 in um, big four sizing, look at the finished garment measurements because I mean, the finished garment measurements for the 22 in this pattern um, is, let me see, the width of the lower edge. <laughs> that See, that's also annoying because I'm looking for the bust line you know, um, finished garment measurement, but they have the width from the lower edge. Who, who needs that? It's 61 inches. And I think this is just kind of a big straight sack. So maybe the bust line's close to 61 inches. The sizing for size 22 is 44 inches in the bust. So you can kind of gauge that this has a lot of wiggle room. So I like the design. I don't have many 1920s patterns. I picked it up again. It was $1.99, why not? She cute. This is Simplicity 8230. It's a Dottie Angel pattern. We had mixed feelings about the last Dottie Angel pattern we made, obviously. I'll put the link below. But it's a pinafore, and I love pinafores. I'm wearing a pinafore that I made. Um, I really like the, I guess it's more of an apron, but this style is kind of a pinafore, how it ties in the front. These other two are backless. It fits my lifestyle. I'm into it. I'm probably going to make it. This goes up to a size extra large, which is a 44 to a 46 inch waist. And then let me see, finish back length. <laughs> I don't need the length, <laughs> I need the width. There, there's a lot of ease in this. There's a ton of ease in this, so this should be good. Again, these patterns are a skosh outside of my size range. I would have not have bought them now, but can't really go back in time. I guess I could return them, but it's too late now. So I have. It's, it's fine. Um, I have McCall's 7775, 7775. Kind of a cool like crossover neckline. Kind of see more in the line drawing, but 
I don't know, I'm into it. The waistline looks nice and loose. It looks like a fun summer dress. I really like the white version. Um, kind of gives me Daenerys Targaryen vibes, but it's pretty cool. Next we have McCall's 7889. It's a little sundress. Kind of the same vibes I'm getting for the origami dress that I showed you earlier, but a little bit under my size range. Um, this does have measurements of the bust line and it has like 10 inches of ease. So I think I'll be okay fitting into this. And I got a little wrap dress, McCall 7892. And a top, I got like the dress version the best though. Um, let me see. And this has six inches of ease. So I probably should be able to fit in that. I liked it. Again, this is just one I bought because it was cheap. I probably wouldn't buy it again. Um, if you've made it, let me know though. I do love wrap dresses. This one is lots of fun. It's a one size fits all. We'll see. My head's pretty big. They're beautiful hats of many different eras. This is definitely like kind of 60s feeling and the rest feel like vaguely Victorian. I don't know. I'm always going to buy a hat pattern. Accessories are awesome and I will buy them every time. A cat suit that comes in my size. This goes up to a 32 women's size, which is a 54 inch bust. Um, this is gonna be negative wearing ease, so it needs to be important that you can fit in the pattern. So, I mean, I don't have a bodysuit pattern or a cat suit pattern that is like this, and this could be very useful for cosplay. I bought this pattern once before. This is McCall's 7230. It is the OG nun, pilgrim costume. I bought it because it has a couple really, really simple dresses in it and some simple underbus corsets that I could probably make in a neutral color and then have something to wear underneath my accessories for my LARP costume. This pattern has been around forever. My mom's made me this dress before. I grew up LDS and we went on a pioneer trek. All the moms made their daughters pioneer dresses and I think 99% of the people use this pattern. Um, you can tweak this pattern for so many different looks. It's the simplest pattern ever. It uses elastic. It's the basic of costuming, <laughs> but yeah, so I got that. I got this formal wear pattern because, you know, I might go to prom as a 30 year old woman, right? But the cool thing about this is it comes in my size. Novel idea, I know, right? And you can kind of see that it has a couple options. And I don't know, it just seemed like a good basic. Um, the gown one, the one shouldered gown guy, let's see how much fabric does that take? It takes about five yards of fabric. That's not a whole lot for a gown. So if I ever have a wedding or like in a gala of some kind I need to go to, 99 cent pattern, five yards of fabric, we'll get it done. I think that's it. Oh. One more thing. Look at these dumb club <laughs> on elf ears I got. I'm not mad at it. Are you mad at it? Because I'm not. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I will keep you updated on all my makes. Um, keep an eye out for that little LARP video. I might post my LARP stuff to Patreon unless you guys are like super interested in it. Um, I feel like people that so aren't inherently interested in LARP, I don't know why because I am. But uh, yeah, those are all the patterns I got. I had, I'm gonna have a lot of fun sewing them up. Uh, let me know what you're working on. I am super, super excited for the weather to get warmer and for me to wear swimsuits nonstop all the time. I hope you guys don't mind that I make 100 swimsuits this summer. If you're not already subscribed, I'd love to have you join us here in our little community. And until next time, keep stitching. Bye.